All right, so you guys know that this is an archive channel. I mean, it's in the name, right? This is not intended to be a shill vid channel. And originally, I was not going to repost any of the shill vids because, uh, you know, as you guys can tell, these videos are up here mainly to create value for you guys, trying to generate some inspiration for doing farm type stuff and mechanical type stuff, working on old tractors and that kind of thing. And, uh, and that's the primary main use of the channel, obviously. But with all that being said, even now, even though I've not produced a new shill vid in like years at this point, even now there are still some machines that I promoted years and years ago that folks have been asking me about. And this HDP Invertig 221 is likely number one out of all those requests. So by request, I'm going to make you guys a real quick update on this machine. And then I'll attach the original video from back in the day after this. Okay, so HDP sent me this thing in, uh, I think it was the fall of 2016. It might have been the fall of 2017. I made some shill vids with it. I used it on all sorts of projects. And uh, after that point, by a good bit, as you guys remember, by the time that I wound things down to start farming, I had, by that time, quite a few welders. I wouldn't be surprised if I had like, like 12 or 15 or maybe even more than that. Uh, you know, more than that in welding machines, I obviously don't need that much equipment, so I sold the vast majority of those. But, obviously, I did keep a small number of these welders around, and this HTP Invertig is one of the only machines that I kept because I really liked it that much, even out of everything that I shilled. Okay? I made a lot of videos with a lot of welders, and this thing, you know, I'm not going to tell you guys it's the ultimate machine whatsoever, but it is in that top tier. I will say that. I made this decision to keep this Invertig not only because of how it welds. Okay, obviously it welds great, but a lot of machines weld quite nicely. But I made this decision in large part because of how well this machine is made. Now, as most of you guys remember, this is an Italian machine, okay? So it's not made in China. And obviously there's nothing against Chinese welders. Dollar for dollar, they can be a great value. But when it comes to equipment that I depend on, well, let's just say having that added European build quality, that was a major factor for me. That's really, really nice to have. And so for the update itself, you know, there's really not that much to say. This machine has been awesome. And even now, even after all these years, it is still my go-to TIG machine. It works flawlessly. It's been 100% reliable. It just plain and simple gets the job done. It gets the job done well. And even after about the six years I've had it, and, and that's the other thing. I don't think I mentioned this in the original video. I got this machine as a demo machine. I don't know who demoed it. I don't know if it was somebody else on YouTube or, you know, some commercial client. But this machine, is pro it was probably at least a year or two old by the time I got it. And I've had it for roughly six years at this point. Okay, so it could be in the field for eight years. And for an inverter machine, that's long enough to be able to pick up on all sorts of defects. In order, That's long enough in order to have all kinds of problems, you know, come out of the works or whatever. Uh, but, you know, mine's been awesome. Like I said, it's 100% reliable. It just plain works. I still love the thing. And uh, also, as you can see, I painted mine silver, which even that's kind of funny because HTP, turns out HTP, even now, they still sell these 221s, and they also paint their new ones in silver as well. So anyway, that is my approximately six-year update that I'm making here for you guys by request, and i just like to thank you for watching over all this time, and enjoy the video. All right, YouTube, it is finally, at long last, time for us to shoot a 221 video. So we'll get this machine out here and we'll get it set up and I'll show you some of the controls and the general layout of it and we're going to end up TIG welding with this thing. We're going to do some steel and some aluminum and uh, some stick welding and just in general run it through its paces. Alright, so since we're going to start off TIG welding with this machine, I guess the first thing to do is to remove its stick leads because the last thing I did with this was run pull stick with it. But that's its whole other separate video if anybody is interested, you know, feel free to check that out. I'll put some links in the description. So let's see, this is our electrode positive port and since we're going to be TIG welding on electrode negative, of course, electrode negative is ground clamp positive. So I'll just put this in here. Now what's really cool about this machine is it uses standard DINs connections. So if you have like regular stick leads for another machine or something if they have these plugs on them they'll probably fit and we'll put that in there and I'll put the torch in the electrode negative port and then I'll just grab this uh, control here this is actually for our foot pedal these machines come with an extremely high quality foot pedal they're all like stamped steel and they have a nice fit and feel and finish to them and uh, we'll just take this little plug and 
threads in like such. And then we'll get the machine plugged in. This is just our standard 220 volt plug. It's the same thing that all the outlets and the other equipment in my shop use. And at least in my case, this is the plug that came on the machine. But of course, if you have another one, it wouldn't be too hard to uh, just slice this off and wire in your own plug. Anyway, we'll just get this wired into our 220 extension cord. And then the machine's pretty much ready to start. I'll just reach around back here onto the power switch, give it a nice flip. And we're in business. Now let's talk about some of the accessories that come with this machine. First and foremost, the TIG torch. Now this machine, being that this is a very high-end ACDC TIG welder, you know, it's not a cheap machine, it's not cheaply built, and neither is the accessory package that comes with it. This is the torch, this is a 20 series torch, so it's a little bit smaller than your regular 17 or 18 series torch. And at least in my case, this is water cooled as well. So if we open up this nice lead wrap, we can see that we got some, uh, some water lines running through here as well. Now this machine is available in a number of different configurations. Uh, there's a water cooled variant, there's a dual voltage variant, there's an air cooled system. Now this is of course the water cooled system. You can see we have this nice HTP Arctic Chill water cooler down here, which we'll discuss momentarily. And because of that, we have the liquid cooled 20 series torch here. Now this torch, it's, uh, it's actually a CK torch. It's the real deal. You can see right here on the side. It's uh, very small, it's ergonomic, and it's a flex head torch as well. So I can just adjust this to get into some tight spaces if I have to. So really like this torch so far. They also give you a nice proper leather lead wrap. This is awesome because a lot of the machines on the market don't come with a protective sleeve like this at all, and some of the other machines that do just have a denim one. This is a real nice leather deal. Uh, it just keeps you from resting your torch leads on hot material, protects them from abrasions, maybe against some level of cutting action, etc. So really like that. Uh, let's see. Moving on, we have the ground clamp. Now you guys know that I've said for years, you can tell a lot about a machine and the company that sells it just by looking at the ground clamp on the machine. If a company wants to just hack stuff together for the lowest rate possible and they're really trying to cut corners on their machine and get their cost as low as humanly you know, possible, one thing that they'll generally do is they'll majorly cheap out on the ground clamp and you'll get something that's really small and really flimsy or maybe that doesn't have uh, contacts on both, on both uh, the upper and lower halves of it. But with the HTP machine, again, this was not built to be cheap. This is built to be extremely high quality and uh, to last for many, many years and deal with some very extreme performance. They give you a proper ground clamp. Now, this is stamped steel. Some people don't like that. I actually kind of prefer it. But it's, uh, it's a thicker stamped steel than most of the ones I've seen. It has an extremely firm spring in it. And then if we open this up here, you can see this is just a work of art. There's A, there is a copper braided section that runs between the two halves. A lot of the cheaper ground clamps don't even have this, so only like the top half is electrified. B, it's a huge braided copper section in here. And then you got nice copper jaws in here as well. And copper or perhaps copper plated, not sure which, hardware on here. So they really went above and beyond with this. That's, uh, that's typical, that's a lot like the ground clamp that came on my HCP 2400. So, I'll just plug that onto our table there, and we talked about the foot pedal, the torch, the ground clamp. I guess that pretty much just leaves this flow meter. So this is one of HCP's flow meters. This is machined from solid brass. Uh, these things are extremely high quality. They're available separate from their welders on their website if anybody needs a replacement. And I've personally recommended these to a number of folks who I've later found out gone and picked one up and absolutely loved it. So we'll just open up our cylinder of argon here. Brand new cylinder. A little over 2,000 PSI. I don't think we've ever even opened this before. And of course, I'll open it until it stops so we have that nice seal on the bottle. And then I'm going to come over here and grab our foot pedal. And uh, we'll get a little pre flow action going. I got to make sure this is in TIG mode first. It's really easy to bump between. There we go. And I'm going to set this to about uh, 25 CFH or so. All right. Now again, since this is a water-cooled package, we of course have this nice water cooler here. This is their Arctic Chill 5460. And uh, this water cooler, in my opinion, this is a very nice water cooler. It's well thought out. If you look here where the uh, water lines connect, they're color-coded. And it tells you right on the face of this. You set up the blue water line in this port and the red one in this port. 
and also there's a switch on the front of it here and what's really cool about this is the, uh, the Invertic here has a water cooler power port on the back of the machine itself so the cord from this runs into the back of the machine so we don't have to like plug this into an external source of power and I'm just going to switch it on. Now normally what I like to do is leave this turned on so that way anytime that I go to fire up the machine, you know, if this thing's been sitting overnight, I'm about to start in on another day of welding, I just reach back here, start the machine, and the water cooler starts with it. So now we'll take a look at the control panel on this machine. You can see we've got our indicator lights up here, we've got power, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Welding current lights up when, of course, you're actually welding, and then this is basically a thermal overload switch. Really easy to navigate through this machine. And now, underneath our indicator lights, we have our various welding modes that this machine is capable of. Now, one thing I'll add is that the manual that comes with this machine is exceptionally well written. It's helpful, it's direct, it's to the point, it tells you what you need to know. And uh, in fact, I'll take it a little further and say this manual is actually a little bit better than some of the technical manuals that I've read in the past. But some of these modes are pretty self-explanatory, like the, uh, the stick function. This is just a standard stick welding mode. We can also engage pulse and have pulse stick welding. Again, I'm not going to go too far in depth on that in this video since I already did a video about that that posted a week or so ago. So I'll turn that off and then right under that we've got our... Uh, 2T and 4T stick welding mode and like right out of the manual here it goes very in depth on this. Uh, for instance 2T welding mode, when the torch trigger or foot pedal is depressed your Invertig 221 will start the arc. When the trigger or foot pedal is released the unit will stop. Select this welding mode for operation with the foot pedal or the torch mounted amperage control. This will generally be the most common mode of operation. See there you go, if you don't know the difference between 2 and 4T TIG it's really easy. You can just look in this manual and it will tell you everything. Uh, and then of course underneath that we've got our TIG welding, our 4T TIG mode, and then up here we've got our TIG spot and our TIG reset settings, and as HTP puts it in their manual, the TIG spot welding mode uh, allows you to weld for between 0.1 and 10 seconds and then the unit will automatically stop. This would be a good selection if you were performing a series of repetitive tech welds. So there you go, it's basically a timed uh, TIG welding function. Now what's really cool about this machine is it also has this TIG reset function which essentially allows you to hook up a handheld amperage switch like on your torch for instance and it'll, uh, it'll allow you to alternate between two different amperage output levels. So this can come in handy majorly if you're tack welding something and uh, you know you want your material to puddle a little bit faster and you want to get a lot of tack welds done quickly so you're tacking at a higher amperage than you're actually welding. So I thought that's really neat and that's just a real brief overview of the various different modes on this fine Italian built premium European TIG welding machine. Now directly to the right of our mode selection menu you'll see these two buttons here labeled high frequency and pulse and these are fairly self explanatory as most of you guys already know. The high frequency just refers to high frequency arc starting with our TIG welding function so if I turn this on we have that nice little burst of high frequency energy which engages our arc and if I turn this off then uh, we'll essentially be in lift start TIG. Now what's really cool about this machine is uh, as the manual puts it on your invert TIG 220 in the AC mode, the high frequency is only used to start the arc, unlike conventional transformer type welders which must have the high frequency on at all times to maintain the arc. So what this means is it's actually possible to weld aluminum in regular like full on AC TIG with all the benefits of that with a lift start type action. So. If you're working on something electronic that's made out of aluminum or it's something aluminum and there's sensitive electronics nearby, you can actually run this without high frequency on and uh, still put down really good quality AC TIG welds without the potential risk of harming the electronics in this machine. Now let's talk about the pulse. This machine obviously offers a full on pulse mode as any higher end you know, AC DC TIG like this will. So uh, I don't know if you guys saw that, I'm going to demonstrate this again here. When I first turn this on, we have PFR, which is our pulse frequency. We can turn this way, way, way down to 0.4 hertz, and it goes up extremely high as well. It'll start going by a little quicker here. There's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz. 
and uh, basically all the way up to a thousand hertz frequency which is which is pretty insane so yeah we have that now if I press this again we have p.du which is pulse duty cycle which is uh, what most people would refer to as pulse time on or um, or peak amperage or peak time rather so we can set this anywhere up to 90 percent all the way down to 10 percent and we'll just set this about here for now but we'll come back and revisit this later so we're just going to start off TIG welding some steel here. As you can see, we're in our 2T TIG function. The AC light is not on, so we know that we're in DC. And I'm just going to turn our amperage up here to about 125 or so. And uh, let's see, we'll go through our function set up here. This is our pre-flow gas. We're going to leave that where it's set up. This is our post-flow gas. And I'll set this to about uh, six seconds or so, just as a decent starting value there. So uh, let's do it. has one of the smoothest DC welding arcs I've experienced in quite some time. And one thing that's really cool about this machine is it has what's referred to as full bridge inverter technology, which uh, gives the machine a number of advantages over a lot of its uh, lower cost competition, which only uses half bridge or in some cases even quarter bridge technology. For instance, if we're DC TIG welding with the, uh, with the full bridge technology built into this machine, we can pull our arc length a lot longer, assuming we have a good gas lens on this thing and plenty of shielding gas, then uh, we'll be able to run at just a ridiculously long arc length, which uh, might sound like some kind of welder's party trick, and for the most part it is, it's not something I'd recommend. However, if you're working in awkward areas, super tight confined spaces where you absolutely have to shove your torch into an area as far as it can go, you still can't quite reach the puddle. Well, with this, we can pull a much longer than normal arc length. So let's try that out. advantages of this machine is it gives you a powerful, smooth, and stable arc from what I would consider to be the optimal arc length to like a mile long and way too practical to be useful in almost any circumstance. However, that demonstration should only serve to prove that if you do have to run a slightly longer arc length than usual, you won't have any issues keeping it lit with the Invertec 221. So uh, the full bridge inverter technology is helpful in a number of other areas as well. Uh, one of the more notable ones is that this machine will run 6010 extremely, extremely well. And that's one stick electrode that's uh, notorious for giving issues when you run around an inverter type machine. But this will do it thanks in large part to its full bridge inverter technology. And that also works to assist with, uh, with arc stability and welding dynamics as well. So let's uh, try some pulse The pulse welding, welding functionality of this machine is extremely simple. Basically all we do is we press the pulse button which will turn on this LED here and then we see P.FR which is, it stands for pulse frequency and this machine will go all the way up to 999 hertz or 999 pulse cycles. Uh, to me I consider this to be pretty insane. I'm fairly certain that's the highest uh, frequency of any welder that I've ever used before. I think I have another one that will do like 750 or something but basically a thousand is it's just over the top ridiculous. So I'm really excited to see that on here and uh, generally you know I'm not going to go too far in depth on the advantages of pulse welding in this video because this video is you know primarily just about the Olin Vertig here however I will say that with a higher pulse frequency you know especially anywhere even close to that high you're not really able to detect any of the individual pulses it basically just fades into a dull roar 
And this is helpful because it, it improves fusion, it gives you better penetration, and it basically gives you most of the advantages of welding. Uh, a kind of too hot for what you're working with without most of the disadvantages of it, if that makes sense. So I'm going to demonstrate a really high speed pulse that I might use to, again, improve penetration or bead profile. And then we're going to come back and demonstrate a very low speed pulse with a better, uh, with a more drastic cooling action, let's say, that might come in extremely handy if I was trying to weld up a hole in something, for example. So pulse, pulse frequency. If I don't turn this momentarily here, it goes right back to showing our amperage. So I'll just do this and we'll leave that pretty much, uh, you know what, actually we're going to set this down to uh, about 500 there and then we'll turn it all the way up to 1000 and then we'll uh, go way down low. So yeah, that's not the only adjustable thing here as well. If I press this again, we have P.DU, which is pulse duty cycle, or as I commonly refer to it, pulse time on. I'll just set that to 50%, and let's see what happens. Okay. You ready? Yeah. So now as you can see we're doing some AC welding on aluminum and I'll show you guys how I have this machine set up. So obviously we're in the AC mode which is uh, made pretty clear to us by this AC LED being lit and then there's the set AC button which gives us this option here and the little F beside that tells us that's our frequency and the B here tells us that that's our balance. So frequency when we press that we can see FAC and then uh, it goes all the way up to 200 hertz here and we can turn this thing all the way down to I believe 20 hertz so obviously the higher the frequency the more I'm gonna set this about in the middle here I'll set it at about uh, 100 here so so with a higher frequency we're gonna have a, uh, a narrower more direct arc and thus a uh, narrower deeper I guess you could say puddle whereas if we turn it down the networks to spread things out for instance and uh, generally if I'm welding on crisp clean aluminum I like to be uh, about like 1 to 200 hertz most of the time if I'm welding something dingy and dirty or cast aluminum for instance then I like like to turn it down fairly low like 40 50 hertz or so it's mainly just uh, job specific and a lot of this just comes down to personal preference if you take like five different aluminum welders and ask them which they prefer you'll get like six or seven different answers so we also have our balance aka cleaning action so you can see here I've got this set to uh oh wait we're still in 
you got to press this twice to get into the balance. So I've got this set to about 70% penetration and about 30% cleaning action because this aluminum we're using, it's been sitting in the shop for a little while so it's not 100% mint, but it is in fairly good shape. But if I really wanted to, I can turn this thing all the way down to uh, ranges between 10 and 90%, but I'm gonna leave this at about 70 here. So, you know, if you really want maximum penetration, if you need every ounce of heat out of this, if you're welding some fairly thick, uh, pretty much mint fresh aluminum, then you have the adjustability to do that. Likewise, if you're welding something dirty and dingy, if you're repairing a casting somewhere, for instance, you can adjust it the opposite direction and have plenty of cleaning action to put down a decent weld on your workpiece. So one of the other features that sets the high quality inverting 221 apart from pretty much any transformer machine and most lesser inverters out there on the market is that this machine has the ability to remember 64 different welding parameters. So let's say, you know, I, I know a guy that works on old motorcycles and he brings me a really worn down old cast aluminum motorcycle head and he's like, I need you to build this back up so I can have a machine. Well, what I do with that is I take it and I get the machine dialed in exactly how I want it and I get it welded up real nice and I know that he might be bringing me more of these things in the future and I also know that it took me a little while to get the set exactly where I want it. So what I can do is I can have the machine remember these settings so that way four or six months down the road when he shows up with another set of heads that need to be welded, all I do is I pull up that program, store it on the machine and everything is set and ready to go. I'll show you how it works. So to access the memory settings here, all I do is I hold down the function and the AC mode buttons and in fact it says here job mode enter exit. So we just hold these down and it says PRG for programs and then we, we're here at program one and like I said there's 64 different uh, memory slots in here so if I want to start out with program one with the settings we were just using moments ago on that aluminum, all I have to do is hold down this button here, which is normally the high frequency button, but in this menu, as you can see by this label, it clearly says set job. So I'll just hold this down and it's in there. All right, great. Now in the future, I can come back and uh, just pull up that memory mode and we'll be right back to the settings we were just using moments ago. All right, so now I want to get set up to do some stick welding with this machine and run a handful of different electrodes here for y'all. So uh, basically all I want to do is take this thing from its TIG welding mode and place it in its stick welding mode there. And uh, from here, I can basically just adjust our amperage. I'm going to start off at about, uh, let's do 125 amps because I'll start off running some 8th inch 7018 and we'll take it from here. Now this machine will do what's referred to as pulse stick welding, which is a uh, truly revolutionary process. It's a new process here in the continental US and uh, this is one of the only machines on the market designed for it, if not the only machine. So that's another one of its capabilities. I very recently made a video just discussing pulse stick welding, which I'll put a link to in the description. But for the purposes of this video, we'll just stick to traditional non-pulse stick welding. So let's start running some 7018. All right, so to start stick welding, I'm just gonna remove our foot pedal so I can uh, make sure this is stored safely and it's out of the way. I'll just reach in here and uh, unscrew this real quick. And now it's time to get this machine set up to run on electrode positives. You can see this is our positive. It's currently ground clamp positive since we're doing TIG on electrode negative. So I'll just unplug our TIG torch, set this aside, move our ground clamp into the negative, and place our stick lead into the positive. Give it a twist here and we're ready to go. high-end ACDC TIG machine, you might be wondering, why should I care if it stick welds? Even if, you know, even if you don't do that much stick welding, stick welding in my eyes will never be outmoded and it really is the go-to process for a lot of things. Take this as an example. This is a tool that belongs to my neighbors and, uh, and evidently, like, if you're setting up wood floors in your house like they're renovating theirs with, you put this up against one board and you like smack it with a hammer and it works to seat the boards against each other. At least that's what they told me. And it's broken, so I told them I'd see what I could do to fix it. 
It's uh, steel, obviously it's about 10 gauge steel, and then this appears to be about a three quarter inch tall block. It's galvanized and it's a little bit rusty, so um, stick welding job definitely, because I know I sure don't want to spend all morning getting this perfectly clean to TIG weld when it's at most like a $5 job. I'm just doing it for them just because, but anyway, we're going to stick this back together. You can see there's a bunch of little spot welds here that broke. And we're just going to use some of this 8th inch 7018 and I'm going to do it right under the fume extractor because I really don't want to breathe in this galvanization stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll put this together here real quick. this on three sides because the way they explained it I think the, uh, the board or whatever ends up coming in under here. But, uh, yeah we'll just hammer the flag off. Now it's generally not too hard for any machine to even to run the 18 properly. What really sets this machine apart is just how friggin well it'll run 6010. Uh, you know part of that has to do with its full bridge construction. You know it's a very high-end machine and in my eyes having something like this that will do things you might not have to do every day sure beats not being able to do those things if, uh, if the situation ever changes or the need arises so there you go later i'll take this back over to the neighbors and talk to them uh, six pack of beer or something so now we're going to be running some 6010 with this machine and this isn't just normal 6010 this is the red lincoln 6010 this isn't the good 5p plus stuff which runs quite a bit smoother this is all the uh the good 6010 that i have on hand so that's what we'll be using but i think you'll be pleasantly surprised to see that this machine runs this difficult to run uh 6010 6011 family member better than most inverters will run the very easy to run 6011s out there this thing with 6010 it's honestly it's one of the nice is running 6010 machines I think I've ever used which was quite a surprise for something that's obviously made for TIG welding primarily. Not only will this amazing machine run one of the most difficult to run electrodes known to inverter kind, it will run it clean through a piece of quarter inch plate like this. So we got the machine set to 100 amps, regular red uh, Lincoln 6010 here, and let's see what we can do. amazing it just plain does it it does it extremely extremely well all right so these are some of my initial adventures with the mighty invertig 221 and uh, i really really like this machine one of the interesting things about HTP as opposed to some other companies out there that build inverters is when HTP introduces a machine, they stand behind it like virtually no one else and they sell that same machine for a number of years as opposed to introducing new versions of it every year. Uh, there's a number of reasons they do this, but what it means for anyone watching this video as I'm posting it close to what I posted here in 2016 is that this is a proven machine unlike a brand new to the market inverter. Um, I first got to run one of these at my buddy Pete's place in 2013 and he'd had his for a while then. I want to say he'd had it for like a good two or three years. But uh, they've, either way, they've been on the market for a little while. I'll double check with, uh, with my buddy Jeff who owns HTP to find out exactly when they introduced them. But these machines have sold very well here in the US. They're, uh, they're proven, they have a track record. A lot of people do some amazing things with them. And uh, an HTP is really well known for standing behind their products. They offer a uh, very generous warranty. There's a uh, try it and if you don't like it, satisfaction guarantee with these as well. 
And uh, some of the most loyal customers I've ever met in all the years I've been in welding and fabrication have been HTP customers. People really like this company. Uh, in my mind, they really treat their customers right. But, you know, since they sent this out to me so I can make this video about it for you guys, feel free to hit the, uh, hit the forums and look up other people's reviews. And I think you'll find that HTP is, uh, is a company that a lot of people really like to do business with. So, yeah, those are my initial adventures with the machine. I absolutely loved it. It was a lot of fun power switches on this side there yeah uh, performed exceptionally well today we got to do all sorts of cool stuff with it and uh, make this really nice video for you guys so there you go um, like I said I really like this machine I got to use one of pizza in 2013 absolutely loved it then and the other thing that's really cool about this machine even though it's a uh, dare I say smaller inverter it's a 220 amp maximum output machine the duty cycle on this thing is pretty far above most other machines this size you know it's uh, I've never pushed one of these into its thermal overload obviously I haven't done much with this but I really got to put some miles on pizza over the course of about a month uh, these things can take some serious abuse and they, uh, they just keep going. So I honestly think it's one of the highest quality inverters on the market. Like I said, made in Italy, it's a premium European machine. And if anybody would like to know more about this unit, I'll put some links in the description below to their website. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm really thrilled to get my hands on one of these and I'm sure it's gonna be in a lot of videos to come. So have fun, stay safe, see you next time.